So you want to add 10 pounds of lean muscle mass that when you go to the beach this year, you take your shirt off, your friends and family go, man, you look jacked. How did you do that? If you want that type of result, we're going to be talking about that all in this video right now. Let's get straight into it. So first and foremost, I need to make mention, if you do want 10 pounds of lean muscle mass, it will unfortunately come with a couple of pounds of body fat. That's just the way that she goes when it comes to building up muscle mass. Now how lean these gains are and how little amount of fat that you can put on, that's kind of going to be determined on how strictly you follow all the advice here and how hard you go on this. So the very first area that we need to handle here is our diet as always. The diet is going to be the thing that's going to really determine how much size you're going to put on how little fat you're gonna put on. So when it comes to your calorie surplus, if you are a guy that has an extremely fast metabolism, maybe you're in the age range of about you know 16 to maybe about 22 years old, if you're in that range right there and you feel that your metabolism is fairly high, then for you guys what I'm gonna recommend is to get a calorie surplus between about 350 to 500 calories because your bodies can maintain it. This is gonna be very easy for you guys. Now if you aren't in that boat and you think that you're a little bit older now and your metabolism is not quite as fast as it was when you were back in the good old days, then I'm gonna recommend that you guys stick with a 250 calorie surplus. When you try and creep those numbers up, it's just gonna result in a lot of fat gain. So with that determined, you're also gonna to wanna to consume your one gram of protein protein per pound of body weight so that you can stimulate that muscular growth. And now the next and most important thing here is for the next two weeks, track everything that you eat. Use the tool MyFitnessPal, okay? It's a great app, it's very simplistic. It's got like every type of meal that you can have and track everything that goes into this hole right here for two weeks straight. One of the main questions that I get when it comes to gaining lean muscle mass and people having troubles with their diet or not gaining enough muscle or getting too much fat is, I don't know if I'm eating 100% correctly. Now that you have a fairly good idea of what type of calorie surplus you should be in and the amount of protein you should be getting, if you track your food for the next two weeks and you see some changes that are maybe not the ones that you were looking for, you can reflect and take a look at your diet for the past two weeks and go, okay, I realized that maybe I was in a little bit more of a calorie surplus than I was supposed to be. Not only that, but maybe your protein intake was a little bit off as well. So it's very important for helping you to reflect on this and see where you might have went wrong. Because if anything is gonna go wrong when it comes to you being able to build lean muscle mass, it is most likely going to stem from your diet. And another important aspect of this, you need to have consistency when it comes with your diet. You can't just be starting and stopping, okay? You don't wanna be just crushing it for five days. You go, I absolutely nailed it. And then for the next six days, just completely quit your diet. And then you're like, okay, wait, I gotta get back on the wagon again. And you just keep doing this in cycles of five days on, six days off, five days on. Those are the guys that come up to me and say, Tanner, I'm not seeing any results. And I go, okay, well, what do you think is the big problem here? Oh, I don't know, everything is perfect. And then to their amazement, when we take a look back at how they've been eating for the past couple of weeks, it's yo, I crushed it for five days and then, you know, it kind of really wasn't on my diet. And that is why. You need to stay on this consistently. Do it for at least three weeks before you slightly take your foot off the gas pedal. And I wouldn't even recommend that. I just say three weeks so that you can wait to see the results compound on each other. If you do this for five or six days, you might see a little bit of change, but then after that, it's very easy to lose. Now, in regards to your training, a lot of guys are gonna say, should I be doing a three-day split, a four-day split, or a five-day split? I'm just gonna take this one off the table, a five-day split, it's likely not going to be very, very important for you. I personally don't do five day splits. I don't think I've ever done five day splits. Now, if you think that you're training very intelligently, you think you have proper form, you're using suitable amount of weight, and you're very great at recruiting the muscles that you're trying to target, then I'm gonna say a three day split where you hit each muscle group maybe once a week, that's personally what I do, will be sufficient, okay? Maybe on that third day, you know, the last workout of the week, you can come and retarget muscle groups that you wanna hit again, maybe your chest, maybe your deltoids, maybe your arms, and that will allow you to actually put on a decent amount of muscle mass in combination with your diet. Now, if you don't have the full confidence that, you know, your workouts are like really, really good and, you know, you're properly stimulating everything and your form is great, then for you guys, what I'm gonna recommend is to actually go forward with a nice four day split. Now, the one that has personally worked well for me back in the past was a upper, lower, upper, lower split. So the first two weight training days of the week, Monday's your upper body day, Tuesday's your lower body day. These two first workouts here are gonna be focusing on big compound movement. We're going to be trying to lift a lot of weights. So you're gonna be doing things like overhead presses, bench presses, squats, deadlifts, chin-ups, pull-ups, dips. 
Those are the exercises you're gonna be utilizing for those two first workouts. With a rep range of about one to five, maybe even get up to eight repetitions. You wanna be focusing on stimulating uh, strength gains and pushing your muscles as hard as you possibly can. And then your Thursday upper body workout and Friday lower body workout, you're gonna be focusing on isolation exercises with higher numbers of repetitions. So if you're focusing on your chest, that would be a day that you would be focusing on getting flies, okay? When it comes to your shoulders, maybe you're gonna be getting some lateral raises. Isolation exercises, high in volume so that you guys can stimulate a lot of hypertrophy, aka muscular growth. You're gonna be combining the two here. You notice I never said just do strength training or just do hypertrophy focused training, okay? If you're not a strong man, then you don't have to do just strong man exercises and low repetitions and high amounts of weight. If you're not a bodybuilder, then you don't just have to do, you know, high, high numbers of repetitions and volume and sets on sets on sets on sets. I've never personally had success with going just one route or the other. I like to get a combination of the two so that you're able to reap the benefits of both worlds. The very next most important thing to handle here is training with intelligence. When I say training with intelligence, first and foremost, you're using the proper weight. You're not using weight that's way too heavy for you to train with and you have to use your arms to help you to get a curl up or you gotta, you know, do some really dangerous form. The less frequently you use weight that is just way too heavy for you, the more you're actually gonna be able to stimulate the muscles that you want to target. You're not gonna have to utilize things like momentum and other muscle groups to help you to lift the weight. You want to have good form. You wanna have good tempo, time under tension for each and every single exercise. You can stimulate the muscles, okay? You're not just having gravity when you're bouncing a barbell off your chest doing bench presses. It might be doing a lot for your ego, but it's really not doing a lot for your muscles, and in fact, it's doing a lot of bad for your joints. So taking advantage of the eccentric or the negative, when you're lowering the weight right there, keeping the muscle engaged, focusing on strictly using the muscle group that you're trying to target. So pushing yourself and challenging yourself to get to that zone where you can feel, okay, I feel like I'm really working. And then utilizing things, you don't need to use these all the time, but they are effective, intensity increasers. So you're gonna be utilizing things like supersets, drop sets, pause reps, things of that nature to help you to demand a little bit more out of the muscle groups on each set. So you can get a little bit further past the point of failure and please do so very intelligently. Don't try and injure yourself by pushing way, 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 way beyond what you can do. Be intelligent. And then obviously you want to be utilizing progressive overload. So if you were able to bench press 175 pounds for one rep last week, this week your goal is to get 180 pounds and it's not just on the bench press. You want to strive to do this with every single exercise that you use. So track the weights that you get, revisit them next week, try and beat your numbers by either getting one or two more repetitions or by adding two and a half, five, maybe even 10 pounds on an exercise. Be intelligent with the muscle groups that you're trying to target. I've seen too many guys, they go and they have a killer workout. They go into the gym and they do bicep curls and they just absolutely hammer their biceps for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. They leave the gym and they go, wow, I obliterated my biceps. And guess what, they actually did but that was the only muscle group they targeted. Had they focused on a muscle like their upper back, which is about eight to 10 times the size of their biceps and did the same efficient workout, the amount of muscular growth you would notice would be like eight to 10 times the amount. If, for example, hypothetically here, you were to gain 5% more muscle from a single workout, again, hypothetical, on your bicep, versus 5% on your upper back, the difference is gonna be monumental. Your upper back is gonna be way more noticeable and the growth there is gonna really, really show on your physique, whereas with your biceps, not so much. So prioritize your big muscle groups. Don't just focus on doing biceps and your abs and your trap muscles. Focus on your chest, your shoulders, your upper back, your legs too. Do not neglect those, your quads, your hamstrings, your glutes. This is where a lot of muscle mass is going to be. Again, training with intelligence. Don't be the bro in the gym that just targets biceps and abs. Now, when it comes to cardio, you do want to be doing it. In the past, when I've tried to gain muscle mass and I've tried to do it leanly and I go, I'm just going to lift three or four times per week and see a lot of muscular growth, screw the cardio. Why would I do that? I'm trying to build muscle mass. Well, I do end up gaining a lot of muscle mass. I'm pretty impressed with my gains. My shirts start tightening. I look a lot bigger, but I've also put on a ton of fat. And I'm always very oblivious of it at the moment and at that point in time. I just think I've gotten incredibly jacked. When I look back in those pictures six months from then, I'm like, wow, I was really fat. So what I've started to do is add in about two to three cardio sessions into my bulking phase as well. Do them at the end of your workout so you don't impede on your lifts and just end up ruining your weightlifting session. And I really wanna make mention of something about you know how quickly you can gain this 10 pounds of muscle mass. I recorded this the other day, so let me just play that right now. Now, the 10 pounds of muscle mass 
it's going to be different for everybody. I can't tell you how long it's going to take for Johnny who's 16 and has never worked out compared to like Chris who's 33 and has been lifting for like the past six years because his 10 pounds of muscle mass will take way longer than Johnny's, okay? Johnny can probably achieve that if he's inexperienced at 16 years old. He could probably do 10 pounds of lean muscle mass if he did it really, really well, like focused and nailed everything I just said there, maybe in like two or three months, like if he nailed everything. I'm talking naturally too. The other guy, Johnny, I think, or I'm, I'm losing the names here. He's gonna take a lot longer because his muscles are experienced. They're getting close to like their genetic potential, okay? It's gonna take him a lot longer of a time to keep adding more muscle mass and adding more size. So for the guys that are gonna ask me, Tanner, how long is this gonna take? How, how quickly will I be able to see this 10 pounds of lean muscle mass, man? Let me know. I can't answer that. It's all dependent on your experience level, your age, how well you apply everything I explained here, how consistent you guys are. So it's pretty much entirely up to you if you guys are in the younger category. However, if you're in a little bit of the older category and you're more experienced, just be aware that this will take a little bit more time. I wish I could give you guys some, some other type of advice. But for all of us natural guys, it's just the way she goes. So there you guys go. That's how you guys can gain 10 pounds of lean muscle mass incredibly quickly. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, then be sure to give your boy a like down below. And also be sure to subscribe for weekly workout tips and nutrition tips that you will not want to miss. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. I will see you all in the next video.